Promised before Brexit, broken after Brexit. Two British mobile network operators are abolishing EU roaming. That will be expensive. Brexit has an impact on mobile roaming at the expense of traveling consumers. Great Britain and Northern Ireland have no longer been part of the European Union since February 2020, which means that the EU roaming regulation no longer applies there. However, before the country left the EU with Brexit, the British mobile network operators had promised not to change anything in EU roaming afterwards. Two of the four British network operators, EE and uh, Vodafone, are breaking this promise after less than two years. About EE, I made a video already. EE customers have to pay roaming fees when traveling to the EU or to Iceland, Liechtenstein or Norway from the turn of the year, provided they have chosen a current tariff after July 6th. At Vodafone UK, accounting begins five days later at Epiphany. This affects consumers with invoicing, that means postpaid, who choose a new tariff after August 10th. Both network operators charge roaming in the form of daily or weekly flat rates. For the time being, travelers to Ireland will not be affected by the price increase. Competitors O2 and 3 have not yet announced any price increases for roaming in the EU. What it looks like in the opposite direction, that means when traveling to Great Britain or Northern Ireland with EU SIM cards, is inconsistent. Because the EU regulation no longer applies, the situation can change at any time. Vodafone's German website promises that Great Britain will remain part of the EU roaming zone even after leaving the European Union. You can use your tariff there without additional costs as at home in Germany. Telefonica Germany, that's O2, keeps its options open and writes that for Great Britain, despite leaving the EU until December 31st, 2021, only the price according to Zone 1, that's EU regulated, will still be charged. Deutsche Telekom is similar. For the time being, Great Britain will continue to be treated like an EU country. The Austrian market leader A1 is already changing or charging roaming fees. Not so with its competitor Magenta Austria. The Austrian subsidiary of Deutsche Telekom promises on its website that nothing will change. The Chinese network operator Drei, Hutchison Drei Austria, is like O2 and Telekom in Germany. Drei expressly reserves the assignment of Great Britain, including Northern Ireland, to Zone 1, but has not yet taken the step. The abolition of the EU regulation with regard to Great Britain and Northern Ireland affects not only the end consumer prices, but also the purchase prices of the network operators for roaming in foreign networks. In the absence of EU regulation, wholesale prices can now be freely determined. It is now publicly known whether and what influence this has on roaming contracts or not known at the moment. For British network operators, the effects are theoretically much more far-reaching than for EU network operators. For the former, the EU regulation has been completely dropped, for the latter only in relation to Great Britain and Northern Ireland. In practice, the situation is a little more complex. Most network operators either have group companies in several other countries or are otherwise part of a purchasing group. It is therefore not easy from the outside to estimate the real impact on purchase prices. It is difficult to understand that Vodafone, of all people, is breaking the promise made before Brexit. The group, group operates mobile networks in Germany, Greece, Italy, the Netherlands, Portugal, Romania, Spain, the Czech Republic and Hungary. The largest part of EU roaming British customers remain in-house. Even if the roaming purchase prices for Vodafone UK should have changed, the money would only flow from one corporate pocket to the other. Soon, more money from British Vodafone customers will flow into the group's pockets. Vodafone has announced it will reintroduce roaming charges in Europe for UK mobile customers from January next year. It's the latest UK carrier to reintroduce the fees after the country's departure from the European Union and it follows, as I said, a similar U-turn from EE in June. All major carriers in the country previously said they had no plans to introduce roaming fees in Europe after the Brexit vote. 
The fees will apply to any Vodafone customers to sign up or to change their contracts from August 11th, with the fees applying from January 6th in 2022. Costs are dependent on the specific plan, but most customers will pay £2 per day to use their UK allowance of calls, texts and data in the rest of Europe, or £1 a day if access is bought in 8 or 15 day bundles. Customers sign up to Vodafone's unlimited data extra plan with four extra benefits or limited data extra pen, uh, plan with, uh, no, I said it, four extra benefits, will pay no extra fee to use their UK allowance in Europe. All UK Vodafone customers traveling to the Republic of Ireland, which is an EU member state, will not have to pay any roaming fees regardless of their contract. Roaming charges were abolished in the European Union on June 15th in 2017, but after the UK voted to leave the EU, it had to renegotiate its trade agreements with the Union. These did not include free mobile roaming, allowing UK carriers to reintroduce fees if they wished. Rather than have all of our customers affected by including the additional costs of roaming into all of our tariffs, customers will be able to choose a plan that comes with roaming included or purchase an additional roaming pass, a spokesperson of Vodafone said. Well, they, anyway, they make more money. Our ambition is to ensure customers don't ever experience bill shock when roaming with Vodafone because all of our plans and passes will have clear usage caps and customers will also be able to set their own limits via Vodafone Spend Manager, which is free to set up via the My Vodafone app still costing more. Those who remain on their existing price plan will not be affected until they make changes. Paolo Pescatore, an analyst from, uh, analyst from PP Foresight, said consumers should fully expect others to follow suit. Phone users will now need to be savvier when traveling abroad, he said. Some will have roaming included on higher priced plans and premium devices, while others will be forced to look at switching to Wi-Fi and take out local eSIMs options. And in December, a lot of British companies set up shop in the EU. For example, two companies that moved to Fenlo in the Netherlands. That's another Brexit benefit like the roaming. Snack Tights as a web shop where they sell tights like it's in the name, they sell these tights to about a million customers in about 90 countries. And Monster Group sells products for catering companies, among others. They are mainly active on the European market, and maintaining access to the European market is crucial for both companies. This is why they were looking for a new place for additional storage in the European Union already before the end of the transition period. But I still want to give you those examples. We knew we had to have a warehouse in Europe, said Bree Reed, CEO of Snack Tights. And in the end, we, cho we chose Fenlo because there are many warehouses here. Fenlo is also close to Germany, which is another important market for us. Yeah, I've been to Fenlo several times. In the end, establishing the warehouse in Germany was not an option because it's more difficult to set up a company in Germany. Both companies say they will expand in Fenlo in 2021. For Monster Group, the opening of the distribution center in Fenlo has even changed its dependence on Europe. Initially, about 20 to 30 percent of our products went to Europe, said Harvey. It already concerns about 50 percent of all our products. Rainer Harvey, managing director of Monster Group, also chose Fenlo because of its location and the many warehouses, but there are more reasons. The Dutch speak very good English, which is really important for our company, says Harvey. In addition, there is also an advantage when, the, when they import goods. For example, the Netherlands has a special scheme for which you can apply for a permit. If you have this permit, you do not have to pay VAT to customs on imported goods, but you can declare it later in your VAT declaration. This is cheaper and more convenient, according to Harvey. The managing director of Monster Group is also happy that they can now do next day delivery. Because we're now in Fenlo, we can serve our customers in Europe and especially Germany much better, says Harvey. And she says, it was a difficult year because of Brexit. Um, oh no, that was the snack tight CEO. 
But he also said we had to prepare for the worst case scenario. So whether there is a deal does not really matter to me anymore, he said that time. Now we have a deal, but it's still better that they're in Fenlo. Reina Harvey can also partially agree with this. Brexit is crazy. You don't know what exactly is going to happen, and we still don't know that. But I would like to see a deal because it's better for the company. Well, you got this, but the deal is not that kind that you can not go to Fenlo. They can already store a lot in the Netherlands, but certain products come from the UK and it can be more difficult to bring these products to European customers with a no deal. But even with the deal we have now, it is still hmm, getting troublesome. What they both agree on is that the British government should have done it differently. Much better planning should have been done, says Reid. And Harvey goes even further. I was reminded of something someone has said before, namely that politicians only care about politics, not economics, Harvey says. And I totally agree. Well, the prime minister said fuck business, so that could have given you a clear picture. The Netherlands faces a lot of competition from other countries, such as Germany, Belgium and Ireland, when it comes to companies that have to relocate due to Brexit. The Netherlands Foreign Investment Agency, the NFIA, is the point of contact for companies interested in establishing their company or part of their business in the Netherlands. I found the NFIA to be more proactive than the other foreign agencies, says Brie Reed. It started with email contact, but eventually the NFIA even made it possible to go to Fenlo during the corona crisis to look at different warehouses. I can tell you, Dutch are good, but the German trade boards also help like that. Both Snack Tides and Monster Group are also still active in the United Kingdom. For example, Snack Tides has a warehouse in Scotland and the Netherlands. Rainer Harvey is also very pleased with the help of the NFIA. We had to move within a month in February 2019 as the deal deadline was March 2019 at that time, says Harvey. We had a very vague idea of what we wanted, but we were especially surprised that the NFIA took us so seriously. We didn't see that in other countries, and I'm sorry for that. I have uh, thought about our places better. It even goes so far that the opening of a distribution center within Monster Group has become a success story. For example, at Monster Group, they say more and more, if we can open a distribution center in the Netherlands in a month, then this will also work. In total, there are around 140 companies that have opted for the Netherlands because of Brexit. The size of these companies varies greatly. As I said, two of these companies are Snack Tides and Monster Group. How many companies will make the step to the Netherlands or did make the steps in, in, to the Netherlands in 2020? Can we still not say, but we have to wait for numbers from the NFIA. And, but there are indications. One of them said, at the moment, the list of companies is already around 500. His name is Barkhusen. This does not mean that all these companies come to the Netherlands. We also have competition from other countries such as Belgium, Germany and Ireland. And um, I was a bit surprised when I heard that um, in other countries they weren't up to the task like that. Um, maybe the ones in Germany were a bit late because they already tried that in time, they were really intelligent to do that in 2019 with all the extension, 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 but they did it in time um, without waiting for another extension. And uh, maybe the Germans were a bit slow at that point because I know what happened in 2020 with the German trade boards. We have a economy help here as well and so on. They, they are really proactive, but maybe they were too late. So. The congratulations, Netherlands, that you were that fast. And uh, as I said, I've been in Fenlo several times before and I've been to the Netherlands several times before and I've been stationed there as well. Uh, I, I really liked uh, Budel, I liked Fenlo, I liked Eindhoven, and of course uh, I visited Amsterdam, um, but I spent more time in Eindhoven. And uh, from, from where I live, people outside the pandemic regularly um, drive to a market in uh, the Netherlands because it's not that far from here. And so we have a lot of Dutch visitors in my hometown as well, especially at the Christmas markets. And I keep my fingers crossed that this year we will have Christmas markets again. And then I'm quite sure when this whole situation allows to have one that we will have a lot of Dutch visitors here again because um, our 
main uh, parking lot in front of the university it's a, a castle by the way um <laughs> is filled with dutch buses it's the same every year and we definitely would miss something and we did miss that last year because that's a, a sight we see every year and then suddenly we didn't so it's a welcome sight to see all the dutch buses again and all the dutch people are very welcome in münster and uh, this year i'm sure we'll see you again and i'll see you in my next video bis gleich